Hello? Wow, this is really cool. I've never had one of these. Um, admittedly, I'm a lot more nervous than I'd like to be, but we'll see how it goes. So today, I'm here to talk about video games. I know, I know, to many of you, video games are just a waste of time. They're a distraction from studies, and they're not really good for anything besides burning hours. To some extent, I'd agree. For the more informed, I'm sure you've heard that video games promote better hand-eye coordination, that they help people make decisions faster, and that brain-training ones like Lumosity teach skills that are useful in school. Sure, I guess. But there's more to it. So much more. A study published in 2010 by Carnegie Mellon showed that the average young person today in a country with a strong gamer culture will have spent 10,000 hours playing online games by the age of 21. Sound familiar? Well, for those of you that have read or even heard of Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, you'll know that this is the magic number. That 10,000 hours in any field with effortful study will make you a virtuoso at it. An expert, more or less. Funnily enough, the average student will also spend around 10,000 hours in school from middle school through to 12th grade, given that they have near-perfect attendance. And that doesn't even include extracurriculars. So, my bad. <laughs> and that doesn't even include extracurriculars. So, arguably, you've robbed people of several years of their lives. But... <laughs> Mine too included, which makes me feel really upset, but... <laughs> it's no surprise that students are experts at studying and task doing by the age of 18. So, you get good at these things. You get good at critical thinking, you get good at problem solving, you get good at collaboration, things that we've all been taught. And they show. So, could it be possible that we're raising a generation of gamers that's good at some, something other than mindless button mashing and questing? Jane McGonigal, a video game designer and author, came up with four major qualities that gamers possess. The first of these is urgent optimism. Think extreme motivation. Urgent optimism is the desire to act immediately to tackle an obstacle combined with the belief of a reasonable hope of success. So let's put this into context. Say you task any one of your classes with a 2,000 word essay that's due in the next day you will undoubtedly be met with groans and complaints. It's my second cousin twice removed's wedding today and I can't do this. Any excuse imaginable. Throw your students into the first level of a video game, however, and they'll believe that they can do things, that it's possible. It stems from the idea that as the heroic protagonist they are, nothing is unachievable, that the challenge is possible simply because it was designed with the intent of successful completion. It might be a reach, but by no means is it unachievable. The second of these qualities is social fabric. Studies have shown that people who play games together like each other more, even if they are getting their butts kicked. So, the established trust, the law-abiding conventions, and the time allocation required to play a video game with someone makes gaming the ultimate platform for social interaction. Forget going to dinner or a park or a movie on your first date. Take them gaming, see what happens. <laughs> the third, and by far my favorite, is blissful productivity. Doesn't that just sound wonderful? So, I said before that the completion of tasks within games was achievable. And with achievement comes gratification. Humans are optimized to produce results. And the result, which is crushing your opponent or leveling up within a game, is a product of hard work that's been put into something other than relaxing or hanging out. The average World of Warcraft player spends 22 hours a week online. That's the equivalent of a part-time job. So, I guess you could say that gamers, by nature, are hard workers. They just need to be given <laughs> the right work. <laughs> Finally, we have epic meaning. The idea that, as the hero or heroine of a story, you're attached to something that's so much bigger than yourself. You're weaving a story, you're solving a problem, one that would have been an absolute disaster without you. You are in the middle of everything. So what happens when you put these things together? Well, the answer? You get super empowered, hopeful individuals. A society that believes they can change the world, 
and one that learns far more outside the classroom than in one. Because let's face it, in a classroom, you don't get that instant gratification, that plus one strength or plus one intelligence. You get a grade. And honestly, one that feels a little arbitrary, like some sort of consolation prize rather than the real thing. The real thing which should have been the content you learned in the assessment. So I leave you with this. If we're spending so much time gaming, there has to be some sort of attraction to it, right? Is it possible that gaming is more engaging, more touching, more meaningful than your lessons? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> but if you're finding that your students are sleeping in class, zoning out beyond belief, play a video game. It might help more than you think. Thank you.